If you think that sewing patterns are just flat paper with lines for marking and cutting, reconsider because sewing patterns can contain magic. My guests came across the original magic patterns with a copyright date from the early 1900s. Then she decided to revolutionize them. Please welcome back Amy Bjarkman, who is our guest for today. Nancy, Mary Brooks Picken was the founder of the Women's Institute of Domestic Arts and Sciences and a celebrity in the early 1900s. Mary always encouraged her students to add their own creative style to designs. Following her lead, that's what we'll do in this episode, only we'll be using contemporary patterns. Magic patterns, that's what's coming up next on Sewing with Nancy. Sewing with Nancy, TV's longest airing sewing and quilting program with Nancy Zeman is made possible by Baby Lock, a complete line of sewing, quilting, and embroidery machines and sergers. Baby Lock, for the love of sewing. Madeira, specializing in embroidery, quilting, and special effect threads, because creativity is never black and white. Koala Studios, fine sewing furniture, custom built in America. Clover, making a difference in sewing, quilting, crafting, and needle arts for over 30 years. Amazing designs and Class A needles. Cardigan, that name makes me think of being cozy. From a sleek jersey knit to a wrapped up number, we'll show you the details on transferring this pattern into several styles with simple yet unique accents. Now during this two-part series on magic patterns, Amy and I are working with simple pattern styles and then making some changes. And the first pattern we're looking at is a knit cardigan and a front, a back, and a sleeve. Pretty, pretty straightforward. Mm -hmm. But just, you can see here in the knit version, I'll spin it around and give you a little look at it. Um, what we're, we did to make this unique is this graduated um, curved hem, and I'll pull up and show you the, the technique that we're gonna look at and show you. It dips in the back. Yes, here you go, we'll turn it right yeah, around very and there nice. she is. Very flattering. But that curve could maybe cause you to think, how am I gonna hem that? Yes, we're gonna do um, something nice here with where we're gonna press and then use this wonderful tape that mm -hmm. gives yeah. us an easy solution for that. Now, honestly, you'd sew the side seam first, but we have a small little sample here. And you'd do some pre-pressing. I'll start with that. Our this has about a one inch hem. So we'll so go ahead. We'll just press at the very edge, pressing up. Thank you. Uh -huh. And we have multi steps on this one sample. <clears throat> and then you might want to consider using a light s sensitive tape that then you unfold it and this the sticky side is placed next to the fabric and you mold it around and if you have to kind of cut the, whoop, whoop, did it too much to angle or make the curve, let me get it a little better there, Amy. There, you can do it in pieces <laughs> like that. And then just trim off the paper. Pull it away. And after you do this. And then we'll press again. Mm -hmm. And it is, it's sticky at this point, so Which you, is not wonderful. it is great because you can get it in the right spot and then press the hem. Mm -hmm. Get it just right before mm -hmm. you put in that final press. So just pressing the edge. And then here's a close up of using the double needle to stretch and stitch in the, in the area and then you have stretch with the fabric and then stretch also with that double needle stitching. So it, it's a great way, that's, that's the most stitching you'll be basically be doing on this garment. So I know it sounds simple, but it is because of some tape as well as some simple pressing. And then you can make a cardigan in a woven version and this, this cardigan has two examples. First, a fitting version, Amy. Yes, what we've done here is the dart actually serves two purposes. It is not only for adding a little shape to the garment, but it's also a, the place that you're gonna position your tie for the garment. Um, and then we'll look at the other yeah. wonderful thing about this is sure. it's a recycled uh, piece of linen, table linen, and you can see how we strategically placed mm -hmm. the uh, pieces of the the design of the tablecloth into the design of the jacket. 
Now our first cardigan didn't have a dart shaping in it, but this one certainly does. And on the wrong side of the fabric, you can use some tracing paper and place it underneath between the pattern and the fabric and then trace the dart. And you'll get the red markings will go on the wrong side. And Amy, on your sample, you yes. have it pinned together. Yes, here it is. We're ready to get go. You can see where the, the dart has been marked. Mm -hmm. And then the two, the straight line indicates where that um, tie will fit in. So you could be add, placed. Yeah, you could add a belt to a, to a waistline dart very easily. And I mean, what a great style change if you had that particular dart in in your pattern or in this pattern. But now that vintage fabric, which is something that you do a lot of. I love to hit the antique shows or the thrift stores and find unusual, the, just the vintage textiles are so unusual. This happens to be actually a, a tablecloth, probably from the 50s. Mm -hmm. Love the color and the design. It has the sure. you know, four corners that are usable. And we have the corners matching here, so you'd get the same look left mirror image, left right. side, right side of the jacket. Exactly. And so the same pattern you could make by... So we cut this window that allowed us <laughs> to, to actually see where we might fussy cut the fabric mm -hmm. to um, place the design exactly where we wanted. So you want a whole leaf there or partial leaf. You use this as your guideline. It just right. takes a few minutes to cut a window. So if you're working with a cardigan, knit or woven, we've just given you three ideas to make it personally yours. When making the magic dress or top pattern, you can mix and match the subtle style features. Focusing on the sleeves, learn how to easily change the styling with Amy's easy to sew as well as easy to wear ideas. We're gonna look at a simple peasant style, but the sleeves are gonna be the focus of this magic pattern section. Nancy, here we have a scalloped sleeve. You can see the detail here, um, where the facing actually provides the cuff that you'll see on this design. So I'll show you how we did it. You do that. Here we are, start with our fabric, and we've gone ahead and added interfacing to it. The next step will be to mark our, our stitching line, and we'll be using the transfer paper with the ink side or wax side down. Mm -hmm. We'll place that in between our pattern, which we traced from the original magic pattern. Um, we'll go ahead and put that on and use our dressmaking wheel to then apply the our stitching line for the shape of that. Mm -hmm. And then here we have um, where we've taken and taken that cuff, stitched it as so, a circle. Yeah, sewed it in a circle, right. Sold it in a circle, and then we've right sides together um, stitched, nice small stitch along that line. Uh, we will then trim. And sometimes, you know, Amy, we'd like to just do another double stitching in that little point area. Mm -hmm. To reinforce mm -hmm. it, especially sure. when you're turning it to make sure you have that strength that you need. So I'm gonna show you how we turned it. We're gonna use this turning tool that helps us get a smooth edge um, for a real professional look. And we, while she's turning, she did some grading of the seams, making one seam about, oh, an eighth of an inch, the other about a fourth of an inch. And really very little sewing, but a lot of little hand manipulation. Correct. And I'm showing you here how this tool has a curved, smooth side that allows us to just get a perfect yeah, great. curve. Um, so yes, this is a, a fun detail. Yeah, just a little subtleness, I think, adds class to a pattern. So press it, set in your sleeve. But you know, not everyone wants to set in sleeves. That's true. Yeah, yeah. Yes, I know many true. people say, I don't want to learn how to set in, I want to learn how to set in sleeves, I'm afraid of them. Well, you could take it in steps. And this top, that this pattern looks much like the uh, peasant style dress, but it has a cap sleeve and they're, it's straight seam allowances, not curved or easing in sleeves. And I'd like to show you on the step outs how this is accomplished. Now this is the shape of the sleeve, this cap. It's a, it's a slight, it's a rectangle with a slight shaping at the ends. And it is sewn to the front and back. So just little straight seams after it's been hemmed. So, wow, that's simple. But then we're gonna have to finish the underarm. And let's just bring this back a little bit to show that the underarm seam has 
some, it's not contrasting, it's the same fabric, but it has some binding put in here. And we're going to not even have to sew it in a circle, but we're going to sew it flat. So here's how this goes. You cut a length of bias, it's cut on the bias strip, about two and a half inches, and then you press under one end. You can see that's pressed under just a little bit. And it's meant to, that press under ed, end comes at the base of the sleeve. And then you sew that around. Sew it around with the standard seam allowance. Then press once, press twice, and a third time. And because it's on the bias, it will fit right in this area. And now I'll just pin this into place. It gives it nice body it, too. It does. And but a really nice finish. What I like about this technique, Amy, I'll just tuck that in here, is that now you just sew the seam allowance after you do the stitching. Of course, I'm I'm kind of skipping ahead, but you'd st straight stitch along this edge to hold that binding into place. Do the same on the other side of the sleeve and then sew the underarm. So you don't have to work in a circle. You don't have to do any easing. It works out well. Flat sewing is always the easiest. Now the third way we're showing this magic pattern, the top is with recycled or upcycled. Yes. I love the men's shirts that you can mm -hmm. find um, at the thrift store. And went shopping, found some fun patterns that coordinated, and then came up with this combination. Um, here you can see where the actual cuff becomes the cuff of the shirt. We just had removed the actual cuff, but shortened it into a, a three-quarter length. And then you can see the um, details where we got coordinating shirts and then did some unique fabric manipulation where we gathered, where we pleated, um, where we pinked, um, just some fun, unique details mm -hmm. that add individual out, individuality to the to the garment. And, and this, you, yeah, you found some coordinates. Lavender is the color, right. I think, yes. of the day. Yes. And disassemble the shirt, cut off the just cut off the cuff, but keep the placket. Right. And then just open up the side seam, and here you go. Here you can see how we place the pattern. Mm -hmm. When we look, look underneath, here's the placket. So you keep that there, and then cut out the rest of the sleeve, and here it is. Yeah. And you're ready to. So you can bind the edge, but it, you'd sew it into a circle, but that adds, again, those little details that mean a lot. But then the front of the shirt, we've shown you three sleeve options, but now the front of the shirt has these great bias cut sections. Yes, more unique details. You can see here where we brought in, you know, a plaid. We picked out the wide stripe, the narrow stripe. Now, you, we've been working a lot with bias in this program, cutting things on the bias because then it doesn't really ravel. So here's another shirt. Yep, another example where the bias is such a nice accent. So here's the shirt back. If you can kind of see from the stripe, and then Amy just cut off one cut inch, on two inch, whatever you'd like. Now, I'll let you perform some magic here. Well, we started with some various styles. And with this, for instance, is where we went ahead and ran a basting stitch and then gathered and just slowly um, added some dimension on this center uh, mm -hmm. accent or applique. Another one, this is actually where we marked and pleated each um, one of the there's a base that we put down mm -hmm. first, a Stitched bias, first, and then right. we put the pleated design over the top. Here we have a little peekaboo effect where we have a zigzag and then we're showing a quarter inch um, little detail. Well, this makes a charming finish just to use some upcycled fabric and cut it on the bias and you have really a personalized look. So a coat? Well, certainly. Working with patterns that have carefree styling is what this program is all about. Choose a beefy fabric and then match your imagination with one of the styles. Now the coat we're working with isn't lined, doesn't have a lot of interfacing. It's kind of a three season outer coat or it could be a fashion coat. Very few pattern pieces and you have great styles on it, Amy. Very simple to make since we're not worrying about lining and interfacing mm -hmm. as you mentioned. 
This is the longer version where we took that, extended the jacket, and you can see one of the details that I love is this casing uh, for the belt to... It's a nice carrier. Very nice carrier. We have a fun, large pocket, two pockets actually. Everybody loves having a pocket for your phone. Here um, you can see another one of the details. I love the mandarin collar and then the fact that we don't have to do a buttonhole. Instead, we're going to use these wonderful giant st snaps that add just a fun fashion accent as well. Those buttons and faux buttonholes are a great way when you're beginning to sew and to use the specialty buttons as Amy showed you. The carrier is a, a nice d detail, so I decided I'd like to show that. And the pattern piece is about three and a half by five and a half inches. And it's folded in half, meeting wrong sides. And then the stitching is along that edge, leaving an opening, a, you know, three, three inch, two inch opening along this edge. And then you center the seam in the middle, and I'm going to do a little finger pressing. You do some real pressing, finger press that open, and then sew the sides. Now you really gotta do some pressing to shape the edges. You may wanna clip off some corners. I like just clipping that for bulk sake. Then through the opening of the seam, you're gonna turn this right side out, and we've kind of advanced that a little bit further. You wouldn't even have to sew that closed if you no. didn't want to, but maybe you should. I'm, I'm sewing with Nancy, yes, so yes. I, I would do that. On the coat, you'll have tracing markings on the back, and you can bring pins to transfer those markings to the front, and then pin it to the top. And this is a lot of layers of fabric, and here you can see I'm stitching that together, just making maybe two rows of stitching to make it attractive and secure. Your pocket broke all my rules, but oh. I'm showing it because sure. I think it's it's good. You didn't even use interfacing, just this heavy just that nice denim, that heavy heavy denim, and then sew two layers together, right sides together, and turn it right side out. And after doing some trimming, you would then top stitch it on just like we did the carrier, but again this time around three sides. Now, Amy, you have a shorter version, same style, but not with the carrier pockets. This style has some unique fabric. What we have here is the, the accent fabric, which again, you have a nice way to mm -hmm. use a smaller proportion of the print along with the solid that I think gives a nice balance. And the accent where we took the actual fabric and, and fussy cut to get some interesting button, covered buttons here. And again, our favorite <laughs> technique right. of using those snaps. Uh, so I'm gonna show you some fabrics that I found that work well for this design. Um, we'll start out with a modern fabric. Um, this fabric was a bark cloth with the texture. Um, here is a beautiful print. It's kind of canvas weight almost. Yes, it's a nice decorator weight. And then this denim has a nice soft feel, but you can see how much fun the combination mm -hmm. is there. And now we'll move back to vintage. <laughs> I'll show you the this piece, which actually I found that I still have my price tag on it from where I bought it at a, at a vintage sale, but you can see this beautiful floral. Oh, We'd lovely. actually probably mm -hmm. piece it this way with the cream. And again, I would say go back to that fussy cut button. Sure, sure. And then your, we'll move your, on. Your favorite one, yes. This is the gray denim with the stripe. And here again, you oh, can see lovely. where this, this was actually a curtain. Yeah. Um, and again, you could go with a, a solid brown button. You could go again, um, either fussy cut mm -hmm. from in here. Sure. Beautiful, beautiful combinations. So you can see that when you're working with a coat, you have options for fabric as well as for styling. A little bit of sewing can go a long way. Today on Nancy's Corner, you're going to learn about the Million Pillowcase Challenge, where these pillowcases are made and donated to causes. We're on the road at Puyallup, Washington at the Sewing and Stitchery Expo to see all about the challenge.
happy to tell you about the One Million Pillowcase Challenge. We started it about four years ago at American Patchwork and Quilting, and our goal was really to make a difference to charities in local communities, and we wanted people to do something that they could make at home or make at their local quilt shop and make a difference in their community. So we suggested to people some different places they could donate. Some of them donate pillowcases to homeless shelters and foster kids and nursing homes, National Guards units, children's hospitals, all kinds of different things. So here at the Expo, we're making pillowcases for the Mary Bridge Children's Hospital. And we've got really fun children's fabrics and those pillowcases that we're making during this four-day event are gonna stay here and be given to kids who are in the hospital. So it's all done with volunteer sewers here at the show, and we tell people we have a 100% success rate. You can't fail at this project. It's so easy to do. We use a roll it up method, or a burrito method, some people call it, and it involves starting with pre-cut fabric kits that we have here at the show, but we also hand out instructions that people can take home so that they can make their own pillowcases there as well. And once you roll it up, put a few pins in it, then take it to the sewing machine. We sew one straight stitch seam, and then you, the magic happens, we say. You turn it right side out and the pillowcase band is finished in one easy step. So the inside is finished and the outside is finished and there are no raw edges. Then what most people find exciting is the chance to try out a serger. And we sew the L seam along one side and the bottom of the pillowcase on the serger. And I tell people it's like an extreme sport. You get to use a machine where a knife is involved and you sew it a thousand stitches a minute. What could be more fun than giving that a whirl? So when that's done, we tuck in the serger tails and it's finished. We work with our uh, different partners that supply the fabric and the sewing machines for the project. So it gives people a chance to experiment with different machines as well. Do you know what comes next? No. All right, I'm gonna show you. All right, that would be good. Everybody who comes here is free to sit and sew with us, and the pillowcases we make here stay here. But if you don't have time to sew or you're not at the expo when we are, then you can do this project at home. And if you go to allpeoplequilt.com backslash million pillowcases, that's where you'll find more information about the challenge. You'll find out shops that are participating as drop-off points. Or if you want to join the challenge by yourself, all we ask is after you make and donate your pillowcases, to the charity of your choice that you add the number you make to our counter. So we've passed the half million point and we're more than halfway there and super excited to get to a million and show people how much quilters care. We'd like to sew at least a thousand pillowcases here and it's exciting at the expo because they also invite people to come and bring pillowcases from home. And I know they've collected more than 5,000 so far from the different participants. So it's a huge number that are made and donated here over the four day event. So I can share with you a few stories of places that pillowcases have gone. We have a quilt guild in Nebraska who donates to foster kids and they found out that foster kids had to carry their belongings in a trash bag when they moved from house to house and that's just heartbreaking as a quilter. So we've developed a pillowcase pattern that has a drawstring in the top and makes kind of a pajama bag and that uh, guild uses that pattern to donate their pillowcases to foster kids. In some areas, National Guardsmen have to supply their own bedding when they travel overseas. So shops will make pillowcases out of patriotic fabrics to send with the National Guardsmen. Or as we're making them here for kids in the hospital who maybe have a sterile hospital room, it doesn't have a lot of color and bright things in it. It can really brighten up somebody's day when it goes home with a little boy or girl that is having a difficult time. What I'd like to tell people is that you can make a pillowcase and make a difference. It only takes 15 or 20 minutes to complete one, but you can really change somebody's life. We, most of us take for granted that we've got plenty of clean pillowcases at home to choose from, but in a homeless shelter where they're trying to give everybody a pillowcase to sleep on every night, to have fresh pillowcases that they can put on every evening that quilters make and donate can make a huge difference. So please join the effort and add to our counter and make a difference in your community for somebody to make a better day by having a fresh pillowcase for themselves. 
During the Sewing and Stitchery Expo, hundreds of pillowcases were made and thousands were donated. And these pillowcases were all given to local charities, especially children's hospitals. If you'd like to know more about this great area to donate, you can go to nancyzeman.com and click on Nancy's Corner, find out more information about the Million Pillowcase Challenge. Special thanks to Amy Berkman for being with us during this two-part series on magic patterns. You can rewatch the program at nancyzeman.com or connect with me on social media through that site. Thanks again for being with me. Bye for now. Amy Berrickman has written the Magic Pattern book that serves as a reference for this two-part series. The book includes a CD with printable patterns for sizes small to extra, extra large. It's $15.99 plus shipping and handling. To order the book, call 800-336-8373 or visit our website at sewingwithnancy.com slash 2807. Order item number MPBK. To pay by check or money order, call the number on the screen for details. Visit Nancy's website at nancyseaman.com to see additional episodes, Nancy's blog, and more. Sewing with Nancy, TV's longest airing sewing and quilting program with Nancy Zeman has been brought to you by Baby Lock, Madeira Threads, Koala Studios, Clover, Amazing Designs, and Class A Needles. Closed captioning funding provided by Pellon. Sewing with Nancy is a co-production of Nancy Zeman Productions and Wisconsin Public Television.